talking about 31, I had a few questions coming out of section 3.7. I'm going to do 37, nope, 33, 37, and 41. So the first part of 33 says, hey, we know f of 6 is equal to 7. So just to point out, right, this initially is my x value. And in here, this is my y value. All right, now if they ask us to find f inverse of 7, keep in mind when you talk about going, and let me use a highlighter, when you go from the original function to an inverse function, we flip-flop the x and y values. So while my y value was initially 7, now you see it as x, right? And since my x value was initially 6, that will become my new y value. So we're just switching the position of x and y. So again, whatever was initially a y value now gets put in as an x value, and what was ever initially an x value comes out as a y value. Now for 37, they gave us a table of values that I'm looking at, all right? And so when they ask me for something like f of 1, again, I want to be clear here, anything in that parentheses is an x value, but f of 1 collectively, right? The 1 is the x value, but f of 1 that whole thing collectively is the y value. So they're saying, hey, if you plug in x being 1, what do you get back out? And, and again, take note that I'm on my original function here. So I go to my x value of 1, and I see 0 comes back out. And that's where I'm getting f of 1 is equal to 0. And this is just a numerical way of looking at a function. I don't have an equation to plug into. I don't have a graph, but I do have a table. And just to continue off of that, if I asked you something for like f of 3, right, you would say, well, here's my x value, 3. What did I get back out? 4. But on the flip of that, if I asked you for something like f inverse of 3, that's when things get a little funkier because, yes, this 3 is technically, if I highlight it here, it's technically an x value, but it's an x value on the inverse function. So it's secretly a y value, meaning I should go to these y values down here and look for 3, there it is, and what was the corresponding x value? 7. All right, and for 41, this gave us a table, all right, so this was the table given to us, all right, and they asked you to come up with the inverse function, and all you do when you go from inverse fu or original functions to inverse functions is you swap out x values and y values. So all you see me doing here is I took all of our previous y values, like 1, 4, 7, 12, and 16, and I made that my new domain. And I took my initial domain, 3, 6, 9, 13, 14, and made that my range. And that's all there is to um, going between an original function and an inverse, right? You just switch up your x's and y's. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.